guys, this video is all about how I make patterns in Illustrator and I'm going to bring you along with me and I'm going to teach you from the size of the file all the way down to the finished product and how to save it. So if that sounds interesting to you, continue watching this video. Okay, so here we are in Illustrator. I am using a 2000 by 2000 artboard. If you would like to use a different artboard, that's totally up to you. But just for beginner's sake, a perfect square is normally the easiest just because you are going to have to remember the measurements of this artboard to make your pattern. So first things first, this is complete preference. This right over here is the swatches panel. I like to delete all of these colors. It is a personal preference. If you don't want to do that, it's totally up to you. It just helps it be more clean, especially if you are making multiple patterns. You're going to save them in the swatches place. And if you have colors and then you have their just default patterns, including yours as well, it just becomes a little bit more confusing than it needs to be. So you can go, if you didn't see, it was these three little lines up here. Go to select all unused. It's going to select all of these. Then just delete. Yep. And it just makes it so much cleaner. Totally up to you, but this is personally what I do. Shameless plug, if you've never used Illustrator before, I have a video that I posted right before this one going through step by step how to open an Illustrator file, what all the buttons on this side means, what all the buttons on these side mean, what you can do, and it was particularly made for surface pattern design and pattern making. So if you do want to watch that video first and then come back to that one, I totally get it. But if you are used to Illustrator, you do know what I'm talking about, you can get started. So we're going to go to File, Place, and you're going to add your art. Now that you have your art selected, you should see it in the little window right next to your mouse. Just click really anywhere in your artboard. We're going to go over here to Image Trace. I, because I normally, if I'm making something that is for a pattern, I will normally just draw it in black. If it has la layers to it, I'll draw each layer separately, but it'll normally be all in black just because it makes it easier for image trace. I'm going to keep it black and white. I'm going to keep all of these settings the same. I am going to come down here though and press ignore white. That will just get rid of all this because if you can see this particular design, there would be a lot of little bitty white that I would have to go in and delete if I didn't press ignore white. So we're going to trace. Press OK. And here we have it. It is still connected. It is still considered one image. So we're going to go up here to Object, then Expand. Make sure Object and Fill are both selected. Press OK. And this will make it all a vector image. So you went from a pixel based image if you're using Procreate or if you've taken a picture of your painted artwork, it is a pixel based image. Now this is a vector based image so it means it uses points and lines instead of little bitty dots. But as you can still see, it is connected still. So we're going to right click, press ungroup. You do sometimes have to press ungroup twice. That's totally normal. But now you can see each individual one will light up blue it's because they're all separate. Now, because of this particular one, it'll be totally different based off of whatever art you are vectorizing. But for me, I can move just little pieces. That's not what I want. I want it to be the whole leaf and make three separate leaves. So come over here, hold your left click, drag, and have it all, whatever area you want connected together, highlight all of that area, right click, press group, and sometimes it is easier. I do have the habit of putting leaves too close together. So when you're drawing, keep in mind that you will have to group certain things together. So having them spaced out enough that makes it easier to do this is super helpful. Okay, now that we have all of these grouped together, now it's the fun part. Now we get to make the pattern. So I like to start on the left side, copy it on the right side, work in the middle, and then mainly just work the top. So work in 
this little circle area. And then normally by that time, I can copy everything on this line over here and everything on this top line to the bottom. And how you want to arrange your leaves is totally up to you. Just keep in mind that whatever crosses these lines of the artboard needs to be copied onto the other side. Now that I have my leaves where I want them, I'm going to hover over here, hold down, and select all of these. Now remember when I said at the beginning that this is a 2000 by 2000 artboard? This is the part where it comes in handy to remember the size that your artboard is. You're going to go to transform, move. Now for the move, you can move it horizontally or vertically. Right now, we want to just move it horizontally. We don't want to move it vertically. So vertically, we're going to do zero. Horizontally, we're going to put in that 2000. Now, if you started on the right side and want to move it left, it'll be negative 2000. Just like if you start at the top and want to move it bottom, you'll just put 2000. But if you start from the bottom and want to move to the top, it will be negative 2000. I have no idea why they do this. It doesn't make much sense to me, but that is how you do it. So you're going to press copy. This is really important. If you just press OK, it'll move all of these to that side. You just want to copy it. You want to mirror that to the other side. And here you have it. And now we're going to work on the top portion. If there is any elements that you would like to copy, like make duplicates of, if you select the item, you press your option key, it will make a copy of that. So we're going to just do that, make copies of what I need to copy, make this entire bottom row, and then we will come back and I'll explain how you make it at the top. Okay, now that you have the bottom done, I'm going to show you how to replicate it at the top. So same thing as the side, you're going to hold down, get right up to this little black line of your artboard, and it's going to highlight all the ones that go over that line. So transform, move. Now we're not going horizontally at all, we're just going to go vertically. So horizontal can go to zero. And because we're going from bottom to top, it's going to be negative 2,000. And the same thing applies if you're going from top to bottom or left to right. It would be positive. If you're going to right to left or bottom to top, it will be negative. You're going to press copy, not OK. So it makes the exact replica. And you can see right here, we have an issue. Now, if you do want your things to overlap, that's totally cool. I personally do not. So I'm going to click, hold down shift, and click the replica. That way they're going to move the exact same. I'm just going to do this. So they're close together, but not touching anymore. And now you just fill in the middle part, keeping in mind that if for any reason any of your elements goes over your artboard, you have to replicate it to the other side. Now, a trick that I use sometimes is sometimes you can get too close to making your pattern. You can get wrapped up in it and you may miss some spots that's not until that you actually replicate it and look at the whole pattern that you see certain like gaps. So what I like to do is zoom out so you see the whole thing. Certain things get darker, certain things get lighter. Clearly there's an opening right here that I need to add leaves to but I may not have been able to see that with me being so close. It may have blended in and been something that I didn't notice. So it's always good to like zoom out, maybe even take a break for a little while if you've been doing it. There are some patterns that take hours to get right between colorizing or color changing and all of those things. So sometimes you just need to step away from the computer take a minute, go look at something else, and then come back, and you'll be able to see it with fresh eyes, and it really does help. Don't ever try to rush a pattern. Clearly, if you have a deadline for something, I get needing to rush, but sometimes taking a break and just taking a breather, having a moment, really does help. Okay, I like how this is. I am going to move this up just a smidge. 
And sometimes if you're moving something, it seems like it's really like bouncing from one point to the other and won't stay like it's on a smooth transition. If you zoom in, you'll be able to do it more. The further you are away, the more Illustrator thinks you want to move it a further distance. So if you're just trying to tweak it a little bit, zooming in helps if you're trying to move something around. Overall, though, I think this pattern looks great. Everything is repeating over the lines. They're all mirroring each other. Now we want to add a background. So for me, I'm keeping this pattern super just black and off-white. So you can come over here into the fill and strokes. Um, you can double click. This is going to be the fill. And we're going to use a little bit of a yellow tone and then pressing M. Or you can go up here and press the rectangle tool. I like to zoom in a little bit. Now this is another part that remembering the size of your artboard is super helpful. Because the background, you're going to want to cover all of the artboard and have a little bit hanging over the edge. Width and height is going to be 2001 by 2001. Because you want that one pixel over so it hangs over the edge. You don't have that weird line. You'll see it a lot if the background is darker. You'll just see a white line through the middle and that's the worst. So having it hang over the artboard just a little bit, that way it covers all of your bases. I'm going to zoom in some more. Move this just slightly to where it's over the artboard. So you can see this line right here is the artboard. And then this with the point is the square that we just made. Now what I like to do, I know this one is covering over. I'm going to go directly to the other side. So I was over here. I'm going to go to this point, make sure this one is over. And it is, it's ever so slightly, but it is over. Zoom out, right click, go to arrange and send back. So sending it back instead of backward, sending it back goes all the way to the back, the very back. It is the last thing before the actual artboard. So there you go, now all your leaves, you can see them again. This is the part of making a pattern that a lot of people forget, and then whenever they try to, here I can show you. So do not do this. This is what a lot of people do, is the hover over all of it, click all of it, go in, add it, but, Whenever you go to see your repeat, you can see all these empty spaces. That is definitely not what we want. So instead, go ahead and delete that swatch. We are going to click the background. Now it's not going to look like I did anything, but I did, I promise. I'm going to do Command C for copy, Command B to put it in the back. Come over here to the fill in the stroke, and this is where you can kind of see that I did do something. I'm going to get rid of the fill. So there will be no fill and no stroke. So if I had done this wrong, this would not still be that off yellow color or off white color. It would be clear, it would be white. So you can clearly see that I am using, I had copied it and pasted a different one to the back. So now, hover over all of it, make sure all of it is clicked. We're going to test out our pattern, and ta-da! Now if you want to see more of your pattern, right-click this box, go to Transform, Scale, and then make sure that this Transform Objects is not clicked. So watch, if it's clicked, you're going to have, you can press Preview. It only transforms your box, it doesn't transform your pattern, so that's not what you want. So have that unclicked and that way your pattern moves. So you can make it as small as you want, as big as you want, that's totally up to you. But this is your pattern, it's looking great. If you'd like to save the AI version, which is the Illustrator version, you can come right here and do save swatches, and then you can save it anywhere on a hard drive or on your laptop. Or if you are interested in 
doing Spoonflower, Spoonflower uses just this artboard and they will move it and just copy it itself. So you don't need to have it whatever size. You just need this. To save yourself some time and some frustration, because with Spoonflower, you have to order X amount of your pattern. So whatever pattern you want to sell there, you have to order it yourself, proof it in person, and then go online. And that's when you can post it for other people to buy. So just to save yourself some time and some frustration, getting the background box, having it go over all of your sides to make sure you do not have any white line that shows up. Because So save yourself some time and some frustration and make your background box over this box, out over your artboard box. That way you for sure will not have any kind of line that appears. So from here, you go up to File, Export, and then Save for Web. What that will do is just take what is inside your artboard, which is exactly what you need, and it will just copy that. So we can zoom out. And now you can see this is just your artboard. And since you know your pattern repeats perfectly and your background goes over the edge, you're not going to have any white lines, any anything that's not lining up, that will not happen. You can go down here, press save, save it wherever you need. Mine are just JPEGs. You can also do PNGs if you like. I believe Spoonflower accepts both. I just do PNGs, the maximum, 100% quality, all of those things. You press save, save it onto your computer, and then you can add them onto Spoonflower without any worry. It Spoonflower's program repeats it for you, so you won't get an entire swatch of just this square. It will repeat the pattern for you. Okay, and that is how I make a pattern in Illustrator. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, please like and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel, and I will see you next week.